My name is Cindy Vestigard. I'm the director of Stimson Center's Blockchain and Practice Program and its Nuclear Safeguards Program. Blockchain technology, or more specifically distributed ledger technology, has the potential to add an additional layer to nuclear safeguards information management systems, increasing security, efficiency, and transparency. There are four main elements to blockchain technology. One is hashing, essentially a digital fingerprint, which is attached to each transaction, linking them all almost like a DNA strand that travels through, meaning that the platform becomes tamper evident. Two, data is replicated and distributed among the ecosystem, meaning that there is no central point of failure. This means that number three, the ledger becomes authoritative. Everybody works from that same ledger. And then number four, there are specific permissioned access controls, meaning that not everybody has the same access to the same information, which would be in line in confidentiality rules for nuclear safeguards management. In collaboration with Stuke, Finland's nuclear regulator, and the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, we developed SLAFCA, the world's first blockchain prototype for nuclear material safeguards information management. What you're going to see next is a demo, essentially a proof of concept, looking at how safeguards transactions can be handled by blockchain technology. Although fictional, SLAFCA is based on Finland's national system of accounting for nuclear material. This system uses a database called SAFCA. So SLAFCA emerges from a shared ledger, SAFCA. It is built in Hyperledger Fabric, which is a permission blockchain framework allowing membership and control over data and access. The SLAFCA ecosystem involves regulators and operators. On the operator side, there is PVO and FT Power, which are operators of nuclear power plants, and DGR Org, which is the deep geological repository where spent nuclear fuel will be disposed of. On the regulator side, we have FinReg, RegionReg, and WorldReg. FinReg is the national regulator, or in the Finnish sense, that would be the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority, or STUK. Region Reg, Euratom, World Reg, International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna, Austria. For the first transaction, we will demonstrate shipment domestic. We log in as FT Power, which is going to send a shipment to PVO. In the details, you can see the batch number is selected and the destination PVO. And we have the ability to input the MBA and the KMP that it is coming from, as well as additional comments. In this case, we're going to make it a test shipment. We execute the transaction. And then you can see that batch number five, although still in our inventory, now has an in transit tag to it and also a not verified by the regulator since the location of the material has changed. To demonstrate receipt domestic, we log into Slavka as PVO, the other nuclear power operator in the ecosystem. We can see that we have received a notification that FT Power has sent a batch. When we click on the notification, we can see the details as provided by FT Power, which is still the current owner, including its material form, material container, as well as the state. As the receiver, PVO can indicate the material balance area and the key measurement point. We can also add in comments. And in this case, PVO acknowledges that what it has received physically is also the same thing that is reflected on the ledger. We receive the test batch and we execute the transaction. And then you can see that batch number five is now in PVO's inventory, meaning it owns the material. It does have a not verified by regulator tag on it as the material has moved locations. For the last transaction, we log in as FinReg to be able to demonstrate verification by regulator. Imagine a scenario where an inspector from FinReg is physically on site at PVO conducting a routine or unannounced inspection. In looking at batch five, they have the ability to go into Slavka, see the details of that specific batch, everything from the material form to the isotope, thick weight, measurement, the provenance of the batch, and all comments that are attached to it. In this case, the inspector confirms that what is on the ledger is also what is physically verified. And then it can click the verify button. Before we do that, though, just to show you what FinReg has the ability to see on Slack, it's very different than for our, the other nuclear operators. FinReg has the ability to look at the inventory in every operator, whether it be DGR or PVO or FT Power. It can also query specifically by specific MBAs or also when a nuclear material was last transacted. So in this case, on site, the inspector can click the verify button. 
And then batch number five, which is in PBO's inventory, shows up with a tag verified by regulator. To ensure compliance with confidentiality rules for nuclear material, operators and regulators have access to different types of information. The permissions in SLAFCA allow operators to fully see their own inventories, but not the inventory of another operator. They also have the ability to query and to transact. Regulators have the ability to see inventory in every operator. They have full oversight, full access, also the ability to verify and to query. As you can see, SLAFCA is a new way of reporting. Instead of the current one-way, too often paper-based system, from operator to national or regional regulator to the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna, SLAFCA is a network system, essentially where operators transact among each other and regulators have full oversight of the transactions. Next step is to look at other aspects of nuclear material accounting and control, such as transport of nuclear materials nationally and internationally, to bilateral nuclear cooperation agreements and export controls. It's been a pleasure to work with Stuk and University of New South Wales, and we look forward to building on SLAFCA to demonstrate the potential of the technology in real-world applications.